Long before I was a doctor, I developed a fascination with painting and sculpting. More accurately, the sculpting of human face and its proportions. As in cosmetic medicine and surgery, very little of the skills and knowledge required to sculpt a human face is about the technical knowledge of how to do the actual sculpting or which tools or brushes to use. In fact, perhaps the biggest portion of the knowledge required is about the anatomy and the proportions and the knowledge of the actual subject matter. When sculpting a human face, you can first divide it into four equal horizontal segments. The first quarter encompasses the crown of the head. The second segment begins with the hairline and ends at the upper eyelid. Most of the subject's facial features make up the third quarter, which spans from the eyes down to the base of the nostrils. The last section of the face begins with the nostril base and ends just at the bottom of the chin. Most people's eyes are positioned roughly around the halfway mark of the head. On average, the eyes are usually spaced about an eye length apart and the inner corners of the eye will line up vertically with the outside edges of the nostrils. This measurement will also equal about one-fifth of the face width. The outer corner of the lips will line up vertically with the pupils of the subject's eyes when he or she is looking straight ahead. When modeling a three-dimensional face, it is also helpful to imagine a curving X-shaped proportional marker on the side of the head between the eyes and the ear. One line of the X marks the natural contour extending from the eye socket all the way to the masseter muscle, which is the lower jaw muscle. The second line separates the ear from the side of the face to highlight the frontal plane over the cheekbones. Just like with other features, you can break the nose down visually into sections. The upper section between the eyes is a bony bridge that ends with a ridge. When you look at a face from the front, you can see that the bridge is typically the widest part of the nose. Two vertical pieces of the cartilage extend from the ridge to the wings, which are made from um, hard muscle tissue. A piece of cartilage called the nasal septum separates the nostrils and you will rarely see a subject with identical nostrils because the septal cartilage normally shifts a little more to one side or the other. The skull socket is actually the most important detail for shaping the eye as its hollow creates the form for the eye area. The eyeball sits in the socket and the lids lay over the eyeball. The bony edges of the socket form the foundation for areas of light and shadow which are essential for describing this area in the artwork. Once you have created a satisfactory eye socket, you may proceed with modeling the rest of the eye. When sculpting the eyelid, you should remember that they cover a spherical eyeball and must be curved. One of the most essential anatomical details of the mouth is a bit of fibrous tissue at its outer corner called the modulus. The reason why this tiny hub of tissue is so important is that it allows a variety of facial expressions. The outer mouth muscles connect to the modulus as does the muscle that connects the cheekbone to the mouth. The visual triangle formed by the cheekbone and the nose follow the little mound on the modulus and the corner of the mouth forms a distinctive dimple as it meets this area. The crease where the intraorbital triangle or the area between the cheekbone and the nose is known as the nasolabial fold. Just under the lower lip are the two pillars that appear as tiny vertical ridges when the light hits them. The curves of the lips are very distinctive features and it is important to render them accurately. The upper and lower dental arches form a convex base for the mouth. The center of the top lip is shaped like a letter M which is often called a bow because it resembles a traditional archer's bow turned on its side. As doctors, you may have varying backgrounds in art. Some of you may have not had any artistic training since the age of 14, and others may have dabbled in drawing or even sculpting for years. My hope is that you will discover that going through these exercises will change the way you observe and even plan and perform simple or complex facial procedures.